Hello everyone. Today's gospel story is perhaps one of the many interesting Bible stories that most of us are quite familiar with. Nevertheless, I would like to retell the story to enhance our understanding of the text and the event. Jesus is going to Jerusalem. On the way, he is passing through a town called Jericho. He has no plans to stay there. In the town, there is a man named Zacchaeus, an abbreviation of Zachariah, meaning the righteous one. But the name is incongruous for Zacchaeus, for he is a tax collector for the Roman Empire. In Jesus' time, tax collectors were allegedly notorious for collecting as much tax as they want from the people. Whatever the tax collectors have collected, over the stipulated amount they kept for themselves. So the people saw them as crooks and traitors. Because of their job and wealth, Zacchaeus and other tax collectors were despised and hated by the people. Much worse, Zacchaeus, as a chief tax collector, probably was getting most of the ill-gotten gains and so was loathed by all. One day, Zacchaeus hears that Jesus is coming through his town. He wants to see Jesus. But he is too short to see Jesus because of the crowd. Despite his stature, he is determined to see him, for he knows that even though he is wealthy and successful, something is missing in his life. He realizes that only Jesus can fill this emptiness. Something within him desperately hopes that seeing Jesus would make a difference in his life. So he runs ahead and climbs a tree to see Jesus. He overcomes two great obstacles, internal and external. The external obstacle involves the crowd and his physical handicap. Internal obstacle comes from fear and embarrassment. His action of climbing a tree to see Jesus may just be to satisfy his curiosity, but at the same time is daring as he is one of the most prominent and wealthiest men in the city of Jericho. This might be that deep down he has a deep-seated need to come to Jesus and allows nothing to prevent him from doing so. As he is eagerly waiting to get at least a glimpse of Jesus, something fascinating happens. Jesus all of a sudden stops, looks up, and sees Zacchaeus on the tree. Jesus knows his desire, his sin and potential. For Jesus, there is nothing more urgent than salvation. So Jesus calls him by name. Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. Of course, Zacchaeus is overjoyed. He excitedly comes down from the tree and humbly welcomes Jesus into his home. But the people are unhappy that Jesus associates with sinners like Zacchaeus and also perhaps jealous that an unworthy man is given the honor of the presence of Jesus. They grumble against Jesus as well as Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus' attention is completely upon Jesus. Maybe he has been longing for a new and different life for a long time but lacks the power to change. Now he sees an opportunity and seizes it. Zacchaeus, realizing the shame he is bringing upon his guest, 
offers to give half of his wealth to the poor and compensate anyone he has wronged. He volunteers to pay back four times the amount he has cheated them of. Throughout the time, Jesus also ignores the criticisms and demands of the crowd and focuses on the one person who is there to listen and grow and change. Jesus sees Zacchaeus' act of genuine repentance and declares that he is a worthy son of Abraham who requires forgiveness and acceptance from God and others. Friends, we can learn several lessons from this story. If you are like Zacchaeus, who seems pretty happy and quite successful in life, but feel deep down inside that you are missing something, then please know that all you need is Jesus. If we will go to him as he passes by, he will fill that emptiness with his presence. Let us remember that without Jesus Christ, we are nothing and can do nothing. In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5, we read Jesus saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Friends, we may try to fill the emptiness with all kinds of things like food, drinks, entertainment, leisure and people. But as Saint Augustine says, our heart is restless until it rests in him because he has made us for himself. When we do realize that Jesus is the only hope we have, then we will go to him. However, there are obstacles both external and internal we have to overcome. The first obstacle between us and Jesus is the crowd. Atheists, non-believers and non-Christians try to take away our beliefs and faith. Even people who are close to us and part of our faith try to keep us from seeing Jesus and believing in Jesus. The lifestyles of priests and fellow believers can be barriers to our faith. These are temptations that make us want to give up our faith in Jesus. Hence, as St. Paul says, we must put on the full armor of God so as to be able to resist the devil's tactics. The second obstacle between us and Jesus is the feeling of guilt and fear. We must courageously and confidently deal with sin, particularly with the pride and greed and get right with God. We must be willing to make sacrifices. Jesus is worth any sacrifice. He appreciates every effort we make to see him. Just as we seek to see Jesus, Jesus is also seeking us for he loves us and wants us, wants to save us and all who are lost. This is how it always comes about. We take one step toward Jesus. He takes two steps toward us. Jesus knows our deepest desire. When he sees our desire to seek him, he stops to redeem us regardless of every obstacle that stands between him and us. He shows mercy and compassion for us. If we will come to him, he will save us, regardless of who we are, where we have been, or what we have done. He grants salvation to all. Salvation does not just refer to going to heaven after death, 
but also brings us peace and joy, the greatest gifts in the world. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My own peace I give you, a peace which the world cannot give. This is my gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. We may not fully understand or realize how important it is to go to Jesus for salvation, peace and joy. But once you get to Him, you will have Him for eternity. His gifts of joy and peace cannot be replaced by anything else in this world. His is an everlasting joy. If we base our joy on things, places and people, our joy will pass away, because those things, places and people will also pass away. However, when Jesus is the source of our joy, it will abide forever, because He will abide in us as well. Amen. God bless you.